Aware of the Democrats' repeated promises to flood the White House with subpoenas and document requests, the president had this to say about these investigations over the weekend. So now they go and morph into, let's inspect every deal he's ever done. We're going to go into his finances. We're going to check his deals. We're going to check. These people are sick. Okay, let's bring in National Security Attorney Bradley Moss, columnist at The Hill, Kristen Tate, and Fox News contributor, former GOP congressman and author of The Deep State, Jason Chaffetz. Great to have all of you with us. Good evening, Shannon. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for having us. And we just now have a tweet in from Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who's chair of the House Finance Committee. She says this, obstruction of justice reality show, firing Comey, sending coded messages to Manafort and others that he has the power to pardon, lying about Trump Tower meeting, threatening Cohen's in-laws, attempting to destroy Mueller. What more do we need to know? Impeachment is the only answer. Jason. Well, she started saying impeachment uh, pretty much when the president uh, uh, was elected. Uh, Mueller is still in place. The Democrats joined the Republicans. In fact, they were even more vocal about getting rid of Comey. It was Rod Rosenstein who put together uh, that memo. And what the Democrats are doing is a total and complete overreach. It has to have a congressional purpose. You're not allowed to just go fish everywhere with 80 different people and hope that you find some fact that you can grab onto. Well, and we had uh, Congressman Adam Schiff, who heads up the House Intel Committee this weekend, saying this about something that may or may not be true. We're also looking at persistent allegations that the Russians have been laundering money through the Trump organization. I don't know that that's true. Brad, okay to throw that out there if you're the chair of the House Intel and you say, I'm going to throw this out there, but I don't know if it's true. Well, look, he's not leaping to an immediate conclusion, which I think you would want to do. You don't want to immediately decide what is and is not true. But let's be real clear, because Jason put this out there. These requests, these the 81 different individuals, entities, corporations, whatever, are all people and entities that have already released documents, these very same documents, to federal investigators in the Southern District of New York, to state investigators in New York, and to the Mueller team. This is basically Congress, the House in particular, getting a duplicate copy mm -hmm. of everything for their own report that would encompass all of these different investigations. And remember, under DOJ policy, the president can't be indicted. So no matter what these different teams find, all they could do is write an internal report at the end. That's why the House wants the documents as well. Well, it's interesting because you mentioned all these other entities that are already looking into all of these things. The New York Times, I think it was today, uh, said basically what Democrats are doing is gathering all the same evidence. So if the Mueller report doesn't pan out, they can actually have the same evidence with a different standard of proof. It's not something that would maybe meet a criminal indictment, but they have other things they can do with it, possibly the I-word, impeachment. I want to play something that Jerry Nadler said, congressman who heads up uh, the chair of the Senate, or excuse me, House Judiciary Committee, where the impeachment would start. Here's what he said on ABC about laying the groundwork. Before you impeach somebody, you have to persuade the American public that it ought to happen. Oh, but uh, put that together with his statement where he says, we've sent these document requests in order to begin building the public record. So, Kristen, is this all about getting to impeachment? Yeah, it's very clear what's going on here. Now that very few people expect some big Russian collusion bombshell from Mueller, the Democrats are prepared to investigate Trump endlessly to find anything to remove him from office. Up until now, the Trump-Russia probe has pretty much existed behind the scenes. These new efforts will, of course, be a lot more public. It seems like there are very few limits as to who or what can actually be investigated. So this could potentially be damaging for Trump. But Shannon, I actually think this will be more politically damaging for the Democrats because because this just reeks of a political effort by the left to remove Trump from office as vengeance for him winning in 2016. These Democrats are obsessed with re removing him from office. It's basically become the identity of their party. And I have to think at some point, the constituents of these Democrats will demand something from them other than just resist Trump. It really doesn't seem like a great plan moving into 2020. I mean, there's no doubt that the base on either side is going to be pretty entrenched, whether they're with President Trump, whether they're with the resistance resist movement. So, Jason, what happens to the middle, looking and watching and hearing these reports unfold over months and now years at a time, all the way up to the 2020 election, no doubt? Well, look, I think they're going to be very dismayed at the Democrats who've been promising since day one. You listen to Adam Schiff, he said, Schiff, he said that there was actual evidence. There isn't 
not only no evidence, you don't have even a single witness. And for Adam Schiff to continue to throw out new allegations with no evidence, no witness, no smoking gun, is the most irresponsible thing you can do when you're entrusted with that gavel uh, there on the Intel Committee. He's a joke of a congressman. He is no way should be in that position. And I think the voters will ultimately take it out on the Democrats and, and take him out of, out of power. We'll see. This is what Sarah Sanders from the White House says tonight. Chairman Nadler and his fellow Democrats have embarked on a fishing expedition because they're terrified that their two-year false narrative of Russian collusion is uh, crumbling. The Democrats are not after the truth. They're after the president. Bradley, do you think that the American public may view it that way? I don't think quite yet. I think, look, the president's already an undicted co-conspirator in the Southern District of New York, tied up in a criminal conspiracy that his former personal lawyer pled guilty to. Despite what Jason just said, there are already pieces of evidence out there about criminal coordination. You had Paul Manafort, the campaign chairman, giving 75 pages of polling data to who? The Russian intelligence guy, Konstantin Kalimnik. You had Roger Stone coordinating what he at least believed was, was information about WikiLeaks and giving it to the campaign. Is there going to be the smoking gun we remember from Watergate? I don't know. I'm not in, in, in that information any more than Jason does. But neither of us can conclude one way or the other where this will go. All right. Well, we should know at some point when the special counsel wraps up. In the meantime, we'll have plenty uh, to wade through with these Democrat investigations on the Hill. Uh, thank you all. Power panel, great to have you. Absolutely. I want to bring in now Ben Shapiro, editor-in-chief at TheDailyWire.com and author of the new book, The Right Side of History, How Reason and Moral Purpose Made the West Great. You and I were going to talk about sundry things tonight, and now we are focused in on something that you have been watching, and that is how Democrats deal with this. Your first reaction, and then I want to bring in some tweets from some of those 2020 Democratic hopefuls. Well, it's astonishing to watch as the Democrats turn their lonely eyes from Robert Mueller, who is supposed to be the deus ex machina who stopped President Trump to the Southern District of New York. They're doing that in real time. They're claiming that maybe, just maybe, once the entire report is released, then it will tell us something different from the fact that there are no indictments, as we now know. And it, it will be amazing to watch them shift the goalposts. I'm seeing the media already suggesting that the big story is that President Trump is going to pounce. Whenever Republicans are exonerated or so, of something, then it becomes a story about Republicans pouncing. It's never about media malfeasance for two years, suggesting beyond the evidence at hand that President Trump was responsible for deep, dark collusion with Russia that ended with Hillary Clinton losing the election. You know, Ben, you and I have talked before, and it's always interesting when people jump the shark on things. So Republicans should hold their enthusiasm on behalf of the president, and Democrats should hold their enthusiasm uh, e either thinking it's a dud coming out in this report and getting thirsty for more investigations. Here's what we have. Uh, 2020 Democratic hopeful Kamala Harris, senator, says this in a tweet. Americans deserve to know the truth now that the Mueller report is complete. The report must be released immediately and A.G. Barr must publicly testify under oath about the investigation's findings. We need total transparency. Has William Barr, either previously in his confirmation hearings or anything you've heard since, Ben, said anything other than he will follow the rules and regulations and release the report? It's his intention to release as much as possible. No, I mean, I've heard nothing except that from Attorney General Barr. And I would expect that he releases as much as he legally can, because if I'm President Trump, that's actually what I want released. Plus, A.G. Barr has already vowed that that's exactly what he's going to do. We keep hearing that President Trump obstructed the investigation over and over and over. There is not one iota of evidence that he actually obstructed Robert Mueller. And I wouldn't expect him to obstruct Attorney General Barr here either, because the bottom line is no indictments. If there were going to be more indictments, you would expect it to be of all the people around President Trump. Forget about President Trump himself. You know, there are people on the left suggesting that the reason no indictments came down is supposedly because you can't indict a sitting president. OK, but you could indict everybody around him. None of those people got indicted. So that suggests that this may be a giant nothing burger. We don't know yet. But the Democrats already suggesting preemptively that this is all a giant cover up is just as they shifted the goalpost from it was it was collusion first, then it was obstruction. Now they're shifting to preemptive narratives about cover ups that haven't taken place yet. You are crisscrossing the country often. I see you popping up at universities and other places and talking to future voters, present voters. What is the temperature of people out there about this subject matter? We saw recently polling which showed that there was a growing number of Americans who felt like this was in fact what the president has called it, a witch hunt, which means it's far and broad and wide. And what are people telling you? 
I mean, what I keep hearing over and over is that people were ready to hear the facts, but in the end, they don't feel like there was going to be much that comes down. And if it turns out that not much came down after Democrats overpromised for years on end that there would be hard evidence that President Trump skewed the election with the help of Vladimir Putin, that's going to be that's going to blow back on them. I mean, you, you promise your base that you're going to get President Trump out of office and have him frog march like the Krasenstein brothers <laughs> and things are going to go wrong for you when that turns out not to be true. Uh, this is just coming in. Senator Booker's campaign has just released an email urging supporters to add their name to a list if they support the release of the Mueller report. If you sign, it leads to a page to donate to the campaign. This is coming from my executive producer, normally on Outnumbered Overtime. Uh, so fundraising off of this. Again, I mean, the, the, the idea of jumping the shark is what gets you in trouble with the American people because, as you said, they just want the facts. I mean, it is such an obvious ploy. Every single thing that can be used for a fundraiser is used for a fundraiser by candidates for political office, obviously. But preemptively suggesting that Barr is going to engage in a cover-up, so sign a petition and give me money, is a pretty absurd use of everybody's time and money. Uh, ben, you know, in terms of this new book that you've come out with and, and talking with young people, and we saw the president sign an executive order this week on free speech, the idea that people listen and talk to each other from every political avenue. What's going on right now should be a bipartisan effort to find out how much, if in fact, because we already know they did, how much the Russians uh, meddled in our presidential election. I want to give you last word on where you think we are right now. I mean, I think where we are is that Democrats are going to have to double down on what they already believed about President Trump. But I think that the best way for President Trump to be fully exonerated with the American public is for Barr to release as much as possible, which I think he will do. Is that going to stop the investigations? No. Mm -hmm. Will it stop the Democrats from looking to the SDNY? Of course not. But at the very least, it should give us a, a final word on what happened with Trump and Russia in 2016. So far, the only evidence available appears to be nothing criminal. Yeah, everybody's saying the same thing. They want to see it all. Uh, and now we've got Senator Booker. Of course, he's a 2020 Democratic presidential hopeful uh, trying to raise some donation money off of it. Uh, but we all want the same thing, and that's just the facts. Uh, ben Shapiro, always great to have you on the program. Thank you. Thanks so much.